Hello, this is Cynthia from River City Yarns, and today I want to show you my new and improved method for doing a knitted patch on a sock hole. I suppose this patch could be used on any hole, not just a sock, but I tend to use this on socks. Here's a patch that I did a little while ago, um, and you can see that it covers up what is a hole on the inside, and I find this to be a nice, neat um, method for improving the wear of your socks once they start to feel the cold floor underneath them through that hole. Um, so here's what you need to, to do this particular type of repair. You need some double pointed needles, two actually is all you need, and um, you need a wool needle, a um, pair of scissors, and some repair yarn. So I'm going to grab my yarn here and we'll get started. All right, so I've got some really pretty purple repair yarn. I, I like this because it shows up nicely on the sock and I don't have the original sock yarn, so I'm just going to make something that's more or less decorative. Cut off um, a an amount of yarn. I've got about maybe a little more than a meter here and I'm going to thread it onto my wool needle. And the first thing I'm going to do is take one of my double pointed needles and pick up stitches across the bottom of the hole. Um, to do this, what I um, do is take the needle, I'm using Addy flip sticks here, and I'm turning it to find the sharp pointy end of it, because one end is a lace tip. And I'm going to use the needle to pick up the right hand leg of several stitches to across the bottom of the fabric underneath my sock. I want to fully cover the hole, so I'm going to go probably two or three rows beyond the edge of the hole. Okay, so I've got two, four, six, eight, ten stitches here, but more importantly, I'm covering the hole um, to, a, to a certain extent on either side of the, of the hole itself. I push my needle uh, across to get it ready for knitting, and now I'm going to get the yarn in. Take your wool needle and insert it several inches below uh, the needle just to keep the yarn out of the way and bring it up if you can close to or in the same spot that that first stitch that you picked up is. I like to leave about six inches total yarn for weaving in afterwards so underneath my gap here there's a little tail sticking out here and that just keeps the tail far enough away that it doesn't get in your way when you're knitting. Right now we're actually just going to knit. So taking my other double pointed needle, I insert it into the first stitch. Knit that first stitch gently because it wants to pull out. And then knit my way across. When I get to the other end, when I finish knitting across the row, I pick up my wool needle, which is still on the other end of my knitting yarn, and I insert it into the side of the, into the stitches in the row next to the one that I'm knitting on. This isn't, um, there's no, you, you could go here, you can go here, you can go here. There's not really a particularly important place or correct place to put that yarn. Just bring it up underneath a couple of rows um, so you can see there's two bars there under my yarn um, on the side of the edge that you just finished and then you're going to turn it around and purl back and the yarn is going to hold because it's underneath these stitches it's just going to hold your patch in place as you go so I'm going to knit or sorry I'm going to purl back and across those stitches
When I get to the first end, where I started here, you may find that that first stitch is a little loose, so you can just give a little tug on that piece of yarn to tighten it up if you feel inclined to do that. And again, take your wool needle and insert it under a couple of bars of the stitches along the sides. You're going up a couple of rows along the side of your patch. Okay, I didn't do this on the other side, but I'm going to do it from now on. And that's that I find that the patch sits a little um, closer to the fabric if you slip the first stitch. So before I knit this row, I'm going to slip the first stitch and knit the rest. Notice that when you slip a stitch, you insert your needle as if to purl, but keep the yarn in the position that it should be in, back if you're knitting and front if you're purling. Okay, I'll do the same thing on this side. So I pick up my wool needle, go under a couple of bars. So here's where my yarn is coming out from the previous attachment. I'm just going to go up a couple of rows. Turn it around and I'm about to purl back but I'm going to slip the first stitch because it's purlwise with the yarn in front and then purl the rest of the stitches. Turn and repeat that process over and over again until your flap is long enough to cover the hole. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll join you again when it's time to attach the patch to the top of the hole. Um, because you're using small amounts of yarn, and we're using small amounts of yarn because we have to thread it through a wool needle and you don't want to have a lot of yarn tangling up to the side of your work, you may find that you run out of yarn part way through your uh, patch. So that's what's happened to me here. I don't have enough yarn to really finish the row and I would like to do a couple more rows above the hole. So I'm just going to take my wool needle at this point and pop it into the side of my sock and take that yarn, <clears throat> take that yarn just over to the side and out of the way. There. I don't want it interfering with my work, so I just just take it over to the side there. Cut yourself a new piece of yarn. Insert it in the same manner that we did before, and that is just to bring it up in the spot where you left off. So I'm going to pop it in a couple of inches below where I want to begin again. And this time I'm going to bring it in, actually, I, you know, I could bring it in right here under the stitch, but I really want to go up a couple of rows as before to keep that patch um, tacked down along the side. So I'm just going to bring it up where I would have done if I were carrying on with the same piece of yarn. And again, leave about six inches out to work with and then carry on with the row. As I work my way across each row, I stop at the end because I have to insert the wool needle, but I also look at how much of the hole I'm covered. <clears throat> I'm covering, sorry. Um, you want to be able to come up, you know, a few rows above the um, edge of the hole. You want your patch to lay flat and not warp your fabric. So you just keep eyeballing it like this. Um, it's easier to finish off if you complete a knit row before you begin the second part. So I'm looking here to see if I'm far enough above or if I should do two more rows. And because I have the yarn, I've just re-threaded my needle. Um, I'm going to go another couple of rows, but you could stop here if you wanted to. Uh, so I'll do a couple more rows and then I'll show you how to finish off this patch. So I'm getting to the end of a row of knitted stitches and this is a good row to end on if you're going to attach your patch to the bottom of your sock or to the top of your sock or to the top of the hole. Um, so at this, at this end, um, I will insert my wool needle again a couple of rows up along the side 
and just leave it there. Now, uh, because I'm right-handed, I'm going to turn my sock around and because uh, I like to work from the right to the left. And I'm going to do what we did at the beginning, which is to pick up 10 stitches along the top of this patched area. Um, and this is to attach the uh, top of the patch to the top of the hole on my sock. Because I have 10 stitches on my patch, I want to pick up 10 stitches on my sock. And again, I'm working into the right hand leg of the stitches on the row. I don't think it's particularly important whether you do the right hand leg or the left hand leg because we're just grafting here. But um, that's just sort of the way that I do it, so I like to be consistent. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So I have too many stitches here. I'm going to kind of eyeball it here. I think I'll just take off one stitch at this end and one stitch at this end. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Perfect. Now I'm going to Kitchener stitch these two rows of stitches together the ones on my uh, needle from the patch and the ones that I've picked up from the sock itself. So I pick up my wool needle <clears throat> and I'm going to do my Kitchener stitch graft. Um, because this isn't really a lesson on Kitchener stitching, I'm just going to go ahead and do it um, and then you can um, look up another video for Kitchener stitch if you haven't done it before. Um, so I start with a setup which is to insert my wool needle on the front needle purlwise and then on the back needle knitwise keeping the yarn under the needle and then it is knit this is the direction that the wool needle goes into the stitch purl purl knit knit and off purl purl and off knit All right, so once you've Kitchener stitch grafted the top of your patch to the top of your sock, you can pop the yarn into the inside. Like this. Turn your whole sock inside out. Okay, and weave in your ends. So there's my knitted patch. I'm going to weave in my ends back here, and I'm done. Here's the patch that I did on my previous sock, and it's gone through one wash. Um, so it looks nice and neat, and it's ready to wear. Um, the only other kind of tricks I can tell you is that um, when I pick up my DPNs to use for this project, I try to use a size smaller than I think uh, would have been used in making the sock. I didn't make this particular pair, so I don't know what um, what size was used, but I normally use uh, like a 2.5 millimeter needle, so for this kind of repair, I pick up my 2.25s and go. That's it for the knitted patch. I hope you enjoyed uh, the video and found it useful. Take care.